Hey everybody, thanks for joining us again for another KeeperDAO community call. I'm Kyle, we're What's the Deets. Uh, excited to be here hosting a, another fantastic conversation. Uh, today we've got a, a couple special guests uh, from Maple Finance and from Maven 11. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just quickly hand the mic off over to them, let them introduce themselves, and then I'll talk about our, our agenda today and, and we'll hop right into the call. So guys, why don't you go on ahead and introduce yourselves? Sure. I, let me start. Uh, thank you very much. My name is uh, Victor van Eyck. I'm uh, Director of Institutional Sales for uh, for the, the Maple Pools here at Maven 11. Um, for those who don't know, Maven 11 is a uh, Amsterdam uh, founded and based uh, venture capital firm, purely crypto native. Um, we manage around 250 million. Um, and um, we, uh, yeah, we run one of the pools on uh, on Maple, as you'll learn in a, in a couple of minutes. So, uh, thank you very much for having us. We're glad to be here, and um, yeah, let's uh, let's hand it over to uh, to Wojtek. Hey guys, nice to meet you all. Uh, I'm Wojtek, working uh, uh, working as a head of operations for uh, Maple Finance. Um, also working actively on the liquid side of our portfolio at Maven Eleven. Uh, didn't speak during the last the last AMA that we had here, but uh, happy to join as a as a speaker this time. Hi, I'm uh, Gabor. Um, nice to be back again after the AMA we had in relation to the uh, USDC pool. Um, so I'm working with, with Maybe 11 here as an, as an advisor on, on the credit risk uh, side. Uh, uh, in terms of background, I'm, uh, uh, you know, as, as many people nowadays, a, a, the TreadFi guy, uh, gone crypto, uh, but, you know, for, for a long time already. Um, but I have, uh, you know, 10 years um, professional experience in investment banking and, and leverage finance originating and, and managing portfolios of, of, of leverage loans uh, within within uh, banks in Europe. Um, and uh, yeah, very, very happy to be here and uh, you know, present this opportunity together with the team and with, with Sid from, 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 from Maple. Hey guys, I'm Sid. I'm the co-founder of Maple. Um, uh, very excited to be here again for uh, our second. I think it's our second appearance now with uh, with Keep it Out, So love what you guys are doing, um, and uh, yeah, looking forward to talking about this opportunity and kind of expanding uh, what we've been doing together. Hey, awesome guys! Hey, thank you so much for for introducing yourselves. You know, I, I'm I'm so excited to to have this call again today. You know, the, the last time we had you guys on, wow, it's already been, geez, four months, I believe. And so happy to to kind of see where you guys have been and, and, and what you have building coming up next. But for today's call, what we're going to do is that I'm actually going to hand this off over to um, the, the, the Maple and Maven guys. And as I just um, tagged everybody, if you hop over to the KDCC-Maple channel, you you can see their presentation for today so you can follow along. Um, they've got some amazing info on their slides that they'll be talking through. So um, hop over into the channel and follow the link to the uh, the Google Drive slide, and you can uh, follow along with, with the presentation. So once they get through their presentation, we'll then uh, hop into those questions that everybody was writing in, in the, the KDCC Maple channel, as well as a couple questions I've got. And if we've got some time at the end, we can take some, some crowdsource questions live here as well. Um, but with that, I'm gonna hand it off over to you guys and let, let's, let's get into this presentation. Great, thanks a lot, uh, uh, for the for the intro. And um, yeah, again, um, welcome everyone. Um, we're pleased to uh, to be here. Um, so yeah, with the presentation, uh, we'll you can just follow follow along. Um, we'll 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 keep it nice and uh, and and short, so we have uh, plenty of time for for questions afterwards. So um, yeah, as I said, Maven Eleven is a is a, is a crypto native venture fund, um, and. Pretty much a year ago, uh, the team invested with uh, with Maple Finance um, in one of their rounds. Um, and as I'm sure you know, all VCs uh, pride themselves of bringing along more than just capital. Um, I think we really uh, proved that here by also becoming uh, the second pool delegate on on uh, on the fantastic platform that is Maple for uh, to uh, for their, their second USDC pool. Um, 
So we started uh, our pool uh, back in July uh, with about 20, 20 million and um, it's now uh, roughly 180 million. So uh, we've experienced a nice growth um, as did the uh, the Maple uh, platform as a whole, which is now more than uh, 550 million uh, TVL. So um, yeah, just uh, to, 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 to jump into uh, uh, Maple Finance and Sid will we'll, we'll definitely talk more about that. But um, so it's a decentralized corporate credit market. That means that we offer uh, under collateralized loans to um, yeah, predominantly crypto native uh, businesses um, to expand their business. And um, this all happens uh, on chain. Um, and again, it's been um, the protocol launched last May. And um, yeah, again, it's, 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 it's well over half a billion uh, now in, in loans originated so um phenomenal job done by by the team and we're, we're very proud to be part of that um so and we get to talk a lot about uh, about uh, about maple of course but just just to to understand what our role exactly is as as a pool delegate um so you could um for those of you who are familiar with the more traditional financial uh uh roles it's it's more of a, a, a portfolio manager of a credit fund so we assess risk of uh, of potential borrowers. Um, we do a, a, a bank like uh, DD and KYC. You can you can say um, we make sure that there's not too much concentration risk versus one borrower. Uh, we make sure the rates are uh, competitive uh, yet uh, very attractive for uh, for our lenders. Um, so we have a team now of four people uh, working full time on on Maple from uh, from Maven Eleven. Um, and we have one of the, the the founders and CIO of our firm is is overseeing it. So in total, five five folks with a lot of um, you know experience and background in in various roles in traditional finance, but also um, also crypto native uh, guys in there. Um, so a very good blend of uh, of, of of qualities there. Um, so next to a pool delegate, we also provide uh, a cover into the uh, into the pool cover, basically. So we're a staker in into our pools. Uh, that means that we put up uh, part of the capital that's uh, being uh, spoken to in case of a uh, default. If there were to happen one, we have had none uh, so far. Um, so that's that's basically the the, the two roles uh, that we that we that we play in in the in the Maple ecosystem. Um, and I'm sure, um, yeah, Sid will 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 jump uh, from here on on a more um, yeah a more in depth overview on on how the protocol works and his vision on what they set out to uh, to build and what they uh, what they have in mind for the future. So with that, Sid, I'll uh, I'll leave it to you. Thanks, Victor. That was really helpful. So I'll just direct everyone's attention to slide six. Uh, so the way to think about Maple is. You know, it's a, uh, it is an institutional capital marketplace, but that's a bit of a mouthful. What, is, what does it actually mean? And the way to think about the protocol is that it's kind of like a, it's like a platform or like infrastructure for on-chain debt funds or, or on-chain on -chain lending desks. Um, so what we set out to do was to create a, a gateway for growth-seeking companies uh, and innovative companies to access uh, debt in a way that we felt was lacking before in the uh, in the sort of the legacy financial system. Um, the way that Maple works is you begin with the concept of a pool, which is kind of like your on-chain debt fund or your on-chain balance sheet. Um, that pool has a manager, which in this instance is uh, is Maven Eleven, who's fulfilling that role of of pool delegate. And what they do is they due diligence uh, borrowers and check their financials, negotiate commercial terms with them, and also bring capital into the pools from, uh, you know, from, from DAOs, from uh, high net worths, and from the broader uh, DeFi ecosystem. So that's, that's at a high level how the, uh, how the protocol works. Uh, we went live back in May of, uh, of 2021, and so in a bit over nine months, we've managed to do about uh, 567 million in origination since then. So um growth has been good uh but uh we're, we're still very much in the early innings here so i would say uh where we have you know where we have focused our attention has been loans to uh you know to market makers market neutral funds um so this includes players like you know alameda research uh winamute uh, but where we want to expand is is to be a broader solution that can firstly uh address the whole crypto native space. So I would see miners, 
<clears throat> miners and node validators as being an attractive next vertical for us. Uh, and then also, you know, bridging outside of crypto and serving, you know, the broader technology space, be it SaaS companies or fintechs. Um, that that is that is part of our vision that we we want to serve innovative companies and growth seeking companies kind of across multiple different industries and sectors. So uh, that's a bit of an overview. Why you know why people choose to use Maple? So I think you know broadly the key the key points that are relevant for Keeper here are you know how risk is managed. So uh, if I just direct your attention to uh, to slide seven, um, once. You know, once an investor goes into a pool, they're really getting a diversified exposure to multiple different borrowers. And all of these borrowers are vetted uh, and due diligence by Maven as pool delegate. Uh, and then, so that's el the second element of protection. So you have diversification. Uh, then you have uh, the uh, due diligence that's being performed. And then the third element you have is the pool cover reserve which is comprised of our Maple governance token as well as USDC at the moment. And that provides a measure of cover in case there is you know, defaults up to a certain level within the pool. So it's just an additional third layer of protection uh, for, uh, for lenders and investors like KeeperDAO. Um, and then as you can see on slide seven, there's currently the additional element of the liquidity mining rewards. Um, which adds, you know, an, another sort of attractive advantage to uh, to participating. Um, one thing we've been talking about a lot uh, over the last few weeks has been revised tokenomics. So I think we, uh, you know, when we started, we wanted to ensure that the Maple token had utility uh, on the platform, and we did that through uh, having it participate in pool cover. But of course, one of the issues we noted was that uh, this introduced uh, impermanent loss, which was kind of less of a well, you know, a less well-known quantum uh, back in uh, back in you know 2021 when we started. But it uh, it became apparent that this was holding a lot of people back from uh, you know from utilizing the uh, the Maple token on the platform and putting it in pool cover. So what we've done is we've we've tried to address this in in new tokenomics that are coming out. Um, some of the concepts here that we, uh, you know, we're pretty excited about is firstly XMPL. So this this would provide a way for somebody who holds the token to stake it, receive XMPL. XMPL would be compounded because it's going to be receiving uh, the establishment fees earned by the treasury, which is 66 basis points on loan origination volume. And so that'll be used to buy back MPL, distribute it into the XMPL contract. So if you hold XMPL, you're effectively getting a compounding balance, you know, similar to how XSushi worked. Uh, and then the other element, which is by far the biggest one, is uh, the idea of single-sided cover. So this means you would be able to stake uh, or, or rather deposit XMPL to, uh, to the uh, cover reserve in the Ma uh, Maven pool. And this would entitle you to receive 10% of the uh, of the interest cash flows coming through that pool. So you can see that let's say let's say the Maven pool reaches like a billion dollars, uh, then weighted average interest rate nine ten percent. So you got 90 to 100 mil coming through. Well, then 10 mil or nine nine to 10 mil would then flow through to uh, to the cover reserve, um, which you could uh, participate in by depositing XMPL. Other element uh, borrower incentives. So we wanted to make sure that. Uh, Everyone, uh, you know, could participate on the platform and you know uh, receive a utility from the uh, from the token. And so part of that is having uh, borrowers be eligible for an interest rate rebate where they're holding above a certain percentage of their loan amount in the token. So this is probably like you know an indicative level of let's say five percent. And then the final final one to note is we are of course expanding to Solana. So we view this as part of a multi-chain strategy and um, as part of that, we, we saw that the safest way to do this would be to have a self-contained token on Solana. But of course, we want to make sure that MPL holders like KeeperDAO uh, benefit from uh, benefit from the growth of that new new market vertical. And the way that we uh, the way that we see that happening would be that the MPL treasury on Ethereum would hold about forty percent of the syrup tokens, and so fees would then be getting passed back through to uh, MPL holders who are staking and holding that XMPL. So it would go into that uh, buyback and accrual mechanism.
So that's uh, that's a bit of an overview of how it works. So I'm happy to uh, happy to pause there and either pass back over to the Maven team or to or to, to take questions. Yes. Uh, hello, guys. So I will talk about the investment opportunity that uh, that we are basically proposing to Keeper. Uh, as you probably know, um, Keeper uh, deposited three and a half million to our USDC pool a couple of months back. Um, it was part of our broader strategy to uh, to, to help DAOs to, um, to 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 help them with the treasury diversification. Uh, besides you, we also got Merit Circle with a, with a sizable deposit and also uh, Pickle Finance. So as v Victor mentioned already, uh, we started the, our pool in July uh, with 21 million. 19 million was uh, whitelisted capital, high net worth individuals, uh, financial institutions, and 2 million was available to the broad uh, DeFi public. Uh, we closed the year with around 118 million TVL. Um, let's bit maybe talk about the, the key statistics of the USDC pool, even though the, the proposal uh, itself, it's uh, it's about the ETH pool, then we'll find a lot of analogies and the system will work exactly the same. Therefore, um, we can talk a bit more about the data from the USDC pool as a, as a benchmark for the for the ETH pool as well. So uh, right now we have around 175 million AUM. Um, we issued 43 loans uh, up until now. The typical tenor was between three to six months. Uh, we actually believe that uh, the tenors uh, will be uh, much more divers diversified, if you can say that actually, um, because uh, as Sid was mentioning, uh, we are charging the establishment fee for each of the loan uh, issued. And until now, there was a fixed fee of 0.5% per loan issue. Right now, this changed to 1% annualized fee Therefore, the borrowers are not going to be penalized for taking shorter term uh, tenors. So they can do one month, they can do three months, they can do five months. It, it doesn't really matter. In the end, they will pay 1% annualized. So um, we always started with, with borrowers um, to, to, to build their credit history with us with three months uh, tenors. And then we expanded that to six months if that was the wish of the borrowers and usually that was the case because as i said like otherwise if, if you take for three months you needed to pay effectively two percent annualized fee so now this changed and uh, and we are becoming more competitive with that regards um the cash component uh, so the usdc part of the yield um, it's hovering around eight percent this basically represents 80 percent of the interest payments that are flowing uh, through our pool the idea in the if pool will be exactly <clears throat> the same. You as a lender will also receive 80% of the interest payments. In addition, you also get the MPL rewards. Um, the monthly target for that is 10%. Uh, I think today uh, the APY in the pool is above 16%. Um, this is due to price fluctuation of MPL. So, of course, each month uh, we, we get a dedicated amount of MPL to be distributed in our pool. And then in the end, the, the price and the size of the pool uh, will, will change that actual percentage on a, on a monthly basis. But the target rate is around 18% all in uh, for the USDC pool, which you are already participating in. Um, there is a 90-day lockup on every pool on Maple Finance. This is on the protocol level. We do that because um, we have a super high utilization of the pool. So over 90% of the funds that are in the pool at all time are issued as a loan. Um, so therefore, we do not really hold it. So uh, the moment that you want to withdraw the money, we, we need to prepare for it. So after 90 days, you're free to go. Of course, you can you can stay for longer. And then if you want to uh, withdraw your money, you are basically entering the, the, the so-called cool down period, which lasts 10 days. Then we can prepare the actual amount for you and plan our liquidity. And then you have 48 hour window to, to withdraw. Um, the same idea is with the EVE pool, but we'll talk about it later. And of course, there is no minimum deposit amount to participate. Uh, from the lending side, it's uh, pure DeFi, no KYC. Uh, nothing. We are only uh, KYCing the borrowers, of course, and they are also signing all the uh, legal docs necessary to do the under collateralized lending. Uh, so let's move to the to the current proposal. That's, um, we can see it in slide 11. 
We are planning to launch the the pool, uh, the wrapped Ethereum pool, end of February. Um, actually, we we have a small delay. We thought this will be more uh, more in mid February, but the <clears throat> but the proposals with other DAOs are are taking a bit longer than expected. Therefore, our target uh, a target date to launch it's end of February as of now, and I think this is really uh, realistic. The target range APY it's eight to twelve percent. Um, half of that should be in the um, in pure ETH or in the wrapped ETH, and the remainder will be in the MPL token. Um, we recommend to stay for at least 180 days because the difference between the USDC pool and ETH pool is that if you are going to participate, you are going to be a um, whitelisted lender. So basically, we are collecting now capital. We expect between 40 to 50 million. Uh, we are close to that number right now, and um, Basically, all of the money that will be um, that will be gathered will be issued on day one to all of the borrowers. So, if you don't want to miss any of the interest payments, and we expect majority of the borrowers still wait, will take the money for 180 days, then you should stay at least this 180 days because then you will be following the borrowers and their interest payments uh, alongside. Basically, uh, however. As I said before, on the protocol level, you can leave after 90 days and there is zero problem with that. Um, okay, and uh, also to talk about the rewards. Uh, so the um, uh, ETH uh, interest payments will be claimable for you the moment the borrower makes actually the interest payment. However, the MPL rewards you can claim on a block by block basis. And then now with the new tokenomics, you can actually put it to work and and stake it uh, for the XMPL or even provide the the pool cover, which uh, which can be especially attractive at, at 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 the start, as all of the lenders will be whitelisted. The same goes with the borrowers. So relatively at the start, uh, we think that's the best opportunity to to participate uh, in the pool cover and compound your uh, yield even for further. But that's optional. You don't need to do it. Actually, the proposal doesn't mention it. So so it's purely up to you. Um, now let's maybe talk a bit about the statistics. The statistics, of course, are from the USDC pool as we don't have data from the ETH pool yet. So actually on slide 12, you can see uh, the number uh, of loans originated. Actually, it's a bit outdated. We Today we crossed the 200 million, uh, 200 million mark. Uh, we are proud of that. Um, I, actually, right now we are at around 205 million. Um, so, so good progress um, in February. The January was a bit more quiet. Uh, it's in general, I think it's probably a quiet period in crypto. The the price action also wasn't really uh, really promising. So we got a couple of large withdrawals and a uh, couple of deposits. But in the end, uh, the the main demand started again in February. Um, on, on slide thirteen, you can see a bit of statistics from the USDC pool. Um, so we are trying to keep the concentration per particular borrower or exposure to a particular borrower at around max 10%. Of course, the smaller the pool, uh, the, the, the harder it is to achieve that because you have a couple large borrowers like GSR, Alameda, et cetera, and they are not really uh, satisfied with taking uh, 2 million loans. Um, so, so once the pool scales uh, scales up, uh, then then we we are really really close to achieving that goal, um, and uh, we are on the right track. Um, the borrowers AUM distribution, as as Sid mentioned, there is a wide portfolio of borrowers in in our pool, and we expect the same uh, in the in the if if pool as well. Um, so we have borrowers which are relatively small, between ten to twenty five million, but also we have the ones which are 10 billion plus, which which makes the offering um, pretty pretty attractive for people that are looking <clears throat> to lend to to a broad range of uh, of various market makers. And of course, um, if somebody is 10 billion plus, then usually the the rule is that he will demand lower rates. And with the smaller ones, we can capture the premium to balance the the APY for the lenders. Um, then on slide 14, you can see the, the typical loan duration. As I mentioned before, uh, it's right now basically 90 or 180 days. We expect that to change with the new establishment fee. Um, you can also see the interest rates. Actually, this is not fully updated um, for, for 2022, 
Uh, but as you see, when we started, the, the rates were relatively low, all of them below 10%. Then as the market started um, accelerating, we saw more and more demand for capital. Uh, so parties were, were taking uh, loans for even 12.5%. Now the rates are still higher than when we launched the pool, but they are trending lower, uh, lower than the end of the year. Um, yeah, I think I think that's it. If if you guys have any questions about the, the statistics, we can share that uh, later on. And now I give the mic to to Gabor to talk a bit more about the credit risk assessment. Yeah, we're very happy to take it over. So we're moving to to slide sixteen. I think you you left out a bit the the, the slide eleven with the the ETH pool opportunity. Or I mean, we can talk a bit more about that. But. Um, so, so just uh, giving a, a, a bit of a color on the on the um, risk management side. Um, I think it's very important to understand that um, that Maple is, is is sort of in a walled garden phase, especially in this uh, still uh, early early phase of the protocol. I mean, Sid mentioned that you know long term plan is to you know build infrastructure, um, but you, we we do this you know in in a very close partnership and a very careful approach, meaning that it's uh, you know it, there are significant hurdles to become a, a, a borrower on the on the platform. It's you know it's open to you know apply. But the you know selection process is is um, pretty strict, and we have you know clear a clear catalog of of requirements uh, in order to even be able to um, to to take a loan on the platform. So you know we 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 do you know a full you know bank type of of KYC onboarding together with uh, with uh, Maple. I mean this is the the feature that allows for under collateralized lending uh, because without that you know because without knowing who your counterpart is and where to find him or her it's uh, it's impossible right so so the um, borrowers they uh, sign a master loan agreement uh, which is sort of the legal framework on which basis the the loans are then being issued and it's enforceable by by new york law um, uh, and the, the contract is is done uh, with Maple uh, basically, um, and um, you know we we as Maven Eleven we are responsible for you know allocating the funds that are deposited then in, in into our pool, including um, the funds of of uh, Keeper DAO, but all other DAOs, all other high net individuals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, we we are also you know selecting borrowers that we want to want to serve so they are obviously the ones that are already then on the platform but we are also scouting for for new potential borrowers and you know go through a, through a very thorough uh, screening process and you know the onboarding then requires a very extensive uh, due diligence uh, process so the the borrowers they you know fill a fill a, a questionnaire that is usual for this type of situation where they give you know detail on on their business on the track record uh, on their practices, etc., and you know, we we then review this, and um, you know, based on the experience that we have collected, you know, talking to all other borrowers, but also you know, being being in the space, we are um, we are uh, then you know, drilling it, uh, uh, trying to you know, understand the, the degree of competence of the of the team, uh, how robust it is. Um, and um, yeah, we also get uh, obviously financials, so financial statements comprising balance sheet, P and L, uh, and you know look through that. Uh, you know challenge positions, uh, try to you know um, understand if there's anything unclear. And and once we have a clear picture, then you know we we start engaging in a discussion around um, uh, loan terms. Um, and um, for for each loan that is being issued. We are working out a you know, bank type credit memorandum, or also that you know debt funds would usually do. So we are always taking a, a fresh view, uh, regardless if it's just a two million loan. We are we are doing the work all over again, um, and you know ask for for an update of financials, ask for how that you know business update, etc. And uh, and then you know we we sort of. Uh, Look how how the, the requested loan fits into the overall broader picture. Um, we usually we're trying to you know make it also a competitive process, so we are, we are not you know waiting for for one party, but uh, we, we are typically discussing with several parties in the same time in order to you know have the best possible pool composition. I think diversification is a, is a very important element, and you know not being dependent on one party, but you know we're trying to um, yeah then you know 
find the best allocation of the capital so it's it's at the, at the best rate with the best borrower so we would be willing to take a, a lower rate if we think that the credit risk profile is better but in the same time if we see that you know with probably the same credit risk we get a better rate we try to allocate it in that way um, for, for us it's super important and now I'm looking at the middle of the page 16 super important uh, to manage the default risk I mean this is essentially you know the the, the, the holy grail and the, the most important task that we we have and you know we are extremely aligned with LPs given that we we provide this uh, so-called pool cover which is right now uh, I think 7.6 million a uh, dollar that would be you know the the first hit uh, element if if there was a uh, you know a default that cannot be remedied or that cannot be you know healed by you know talking to the defaulting borrower and enforcing etc cetera, etc cetera. so once you know go down this route after you, you know try to find a, a friendly solution try to you know get it done on a legal way and there's still no recovery then you know we would um you know come up with the money um and uh, we we you know we will take uh, the hit um and you know there's a strong strong incentive for us not to underwrite any any problem beforehand because we would you know lose all before the lps take a single penny hit and you know there's a i think a sufficient incentive here at stake and i'm talking about the the usdc pool with the six uh, seven point six million and just uh, in context uh, of the pool size um so the the, the median loan amount rough, is roughly 8.2 million at the moment so the the pool cover is still you know able to cover a, a proper a proper full full default um which um, I think is a really nice uh, security feature. Um, uh, yeah, um, yeah, and uh, I, I think I talked about the due diligence aspect. Um, but um, yeah, I'm mean, very happy to take on um, to take on further further um, questions then in a in a way of a, of a Q and A. And you know, Wojtek, uh, please you know feel free to to add extra color if I missed something. Hey guys, thank you. I mean. Really, really cool stuff here. Lots of lots of great information as well. I think something that you guys kind of glanced over a little bit, or at least in, in my eyes, that seems super exciting was was the the syrup project now on on Solana. Can you talk just a little bit more about what went into developing that, and 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 again, kind of like how how it's going to benefit the rest of your ecosystem? Yeah, I can probably. Um, so, uh, like, I think what one of one of the key things we're looking for this year is how do how do we increase our kind of total total addressable market? And so we've looked at offering new coins, which is part of what the Weave Pool is about, but serving new industry verticals, which is you know a push into the mining sector as well. And then another part of that is serving, uh, you know, serving new chains and ecosystems. And the Solana one is a pretty exciting one there. And so this, that was uh, that figured quite prominently in the thought process. Uh, additionally, we uh, we initially began with a hypothesis that you know institutions who are borrowing in large amounts wouldn't really care about, let's say, like a thousand dollars gas fee to, uh, you know, to lodge a loan request. But uh, over time, we actually observed that wasn't the case and that um, this was commented on quite, uh, quite often uh, by the institutional borrowers. So we looked, we kind of surveyed across at what uh, the different scaling solutions would be or, or ways to, uh, you know, to improve the user experience. And um, one thing that came up prominently was uh, they all they all prefer the security of layer ones to um to to layer twos just because of the the kind of security issues of uh, of bridging and so what we looked for then as we surveyed the layer ones was um uh, an ecosystem that was reasonably well developed so that we would have composability if we uh, if we went there and were part of the DeFi space um, also one that had good kind of pillars of support. Um, you know, which on Solana is, uh, you know, Jump and Alameda, uh, Multicoin as well. So, you know, it, it does have sort of strong, strong backers. Uh, and then the other one uh, was, of course, uh, you know, the, the picks and shovels tooling that's kind of needed to support operating on one of those, uh, on one of those other protocols, which is, uh, you know, things like Fireblock support. So most of our borrowers are generally uh, generally interacting with DeFi through Fireblocks, um, and so having that kind of tooling 
uh, you know, means that uh, means that we're actually able to support those customers in a way that we wouldn't be able to if we went to a chain that didn't actually have that kind of picks and shovels support there. Um, and so that that led us to then look at who you know who else was uh, doing something similar. And so our options were we could have gone and built directly onto uh, onto Solana. This probably would have taken something like nine months. Like we would have had to hire the Rust engineers, familiarize them familiarize them with how our protocol operates, and also you know developing on Solana. And so we actually we met the the Avari team, so uh, Quinn and Jeff, and were super impressed by them. This was around uh, just after Christmas. And then we, uh, you know, we decided to effective. We decided to acquire them, but effectively, the way that's shaken out is almost like a JV onto a new chain. Um, and so, so how? So then, the things we thought about in in terms of building, and and we will be launching now onto Solana in in March. So we've accelerated the timeline of getting there by about you know six to seven months through the acquisition, rather than you know building it ourselves, and. Um, and then what we thought about with Syrup was what is the lowest risk way to do this from first principles? Now, it, it, it is a relatively untested space. Like there are some projects that have, you know, forked or replicated themselves on other chains, uh, but there are a few that have done it on one that has engineering as different as Solana. Um, and so we needed to think hard about security and user experience. And so there was a question of well do we do we bridge mpl across or just you know have mpl minted on another chain or do we need to make this like a self-contained token and then work out how to uh, how to actually align the two you know align the long-term interest of mpl holders so that they benefit from the syrup launch um that was ultimately what we decided to do because we couldn't get comfortable that bridging mpl wouldn't place it at a risk of loss uh through a hack and also that if you if you needed to then bridge MPL across, you're actually going to be incurring almost all of the transaction costs that you were trying to get away from by being on Solana in the first place. And you would require people to uh, you know to effectively kind of operate on two chains, even if they just wanted to use uh, use MPL on uh, on Solana. Um, so that that was the decision we went with. And then the question became, well, how do we actually align the interests of MPL holders so that they benefit? And so there was then a question of should this be done through like an airdrop or should this be done through some other allocation of uh, of the syrup token to uh, to MPL holders, and what we've opted for uh, as the you know as as the preferred solution is that forty percent of the syrup tokens, which will replicate the tokenomics of um, of MPL that I described. So you'll have X syrup, you'll have single sided cover. Um, what we chose to do was to uh, to hold that in the MPL treasury so that uh, the MPL treasury will receive about 40% of the fees that come through from Maple on Solana and then be able to pass that through to uh, to MPL holders who are who are staking in the XMPL contract. So we felt that that was kind of a good way to actually align, you know, allow MPL holders to benefit from the growth because they'll receive those fees um, whilst also giving us flexibility because the token is not going to be widely in circulation, which I think can actually be sort of damaging to uh, to protocols. Like we've all sort of seen the negative effects of uh, of yield yield farming. For sure, um, I guess that is uh, a good bridge to to one of our community questions, which talks about you know you guys have yeah you have, you have funding from us and from a, a number of other DAOs. If you are not, um, you know, on the multi-sig or, or, or kind of able to, to access that that address, how could somebody like a community member of one of those DAOs actually track, um, you know, rewards and, uh, and and interest earned by by the the assets from the DAO? Is that do you guys have something like that in development, or is there a way that you'd recommend seeing that? Yes, good question. So, you, are you talking about, um, say, a member of, uh, like, a member of KeeperDAO seeing how much Keeper has earned from, uh, from participating on Maple? Yeah, that's uh, a much shorter and e clearer way to, of asking that. <laughs> no, no, good, all good. Um, we do have a June dashboard actually, and uh, 
that's not a specific um that's not a specific uh kind of feature we have within the dune dashboard but i could see it being highly i could see it being highly useful um and i was actually just approached by the dune team about setting up like kind of a, a bounty for it um so what i might do is actually explore whether that's something we could do because i could see it being quite useful for uh for any DAO participating on um participating on maple i think it's a really good idea awesome um and then you know something that that you know you guys uh posted a response to 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 the the recent stuff um but i just want to just kind of give you guys just another chance because i'm sure that some folks here are wanting to hear about it if you guys want to just quickly talk again about um, the MGNR situation and kind of how you guys, you know, look at situations like that, how they're assessed and um, kind of what, what steps are taken going forward. Yeah, sure. I can, I can fill that one as well. So to give everyone a bit of a rundown of like the historical events. So uh, MGNR has taken out two loans on the platform on uh with one of them which is the eight and a half million one they um it was used to arb the uh arb the pool um we then had a conversation with mgnr because we don't want what is effectively wash trading on the platform and it's not really in line with what we're trying to do you know as as a uh, as a protocol or in line with our mission um they accepted that. We didn't have a problem with them since. The article cited two loans as being MGNR, with despite you know not really verifying that. Um, the other loan wasn't MGNR that it cited. It was a different borrower, and uh, that was not a not an intentional uh, ARB or anything like that. It, what it was the result of was that the uh, the team, so the trading desk, borrowed and then put it in their treasury, and then a different desk. Um, that's part of the same organization so it's a you know it's a hundred person plus organization um was deploying their treasury funding and uh had committed to be part of the liquidity mining program um early on from uh from inception so that team uh has not been farming and dumping the rewards uh, and uh that was a result of their internal miscommunication that the two the two desks were not communicating and we've not had any other issues with them since um so we didn't view that as a malicious attempt, and we have a pretty good relationship with um, with that borrower. Uh, so where that left us, right, is then, well, what's the extent of this issue? And so near as we can tell, it's, you know, this singular eight and a half million dollar loan, which now amounts to less than one and a half percent of all loans done through the platform. Um, so uh, we didn't view this as a systemic issue that needed to, you know, needed the focus of the whole team to address. And it was more, you know, a once off issue. Um, so where does that leave us in terms of present, you know, preventing it in future? So uh, one of the comments I've made, which was cited on Twitter, was that, um, you know, it was not prevented by the borrowing agreements. So that's that was, you know, that was my kind of unsophisticated legal read. Since then, we've brought on a GC in the last couple of weeks. You know, not prompted by this, um, but uh, the GC's read was that uh, it actually is very much you know pre prevented by the agreements, and so uh, we have communicated that to you know to all existing borrowers, and we do communicate it to all future prospective borrowers. Um, but uh, it is actually you know prevented by the agreement that the borrower signed. So then the issue kind of becomes well. Yeah, given that we haven't had the problem since with MGNR, what would be, you know, what steps are needed, if any? Um, and so we feel that it's it's not currently it's not currently an issue that we're we're facing or that we view as kind of systemic to the health of the protocol or one which is significantly inflating TVL on the platform. So we're kind of taking a, a bit of a monitoring approach at the moment. Um, and uh, what we what we will probably look to do is is maybe just include some additional wording in the loan confirmation, um, just kind of bolstering and reflecting what's already in the MLA. So hopefully, hopefully that kind of clarifies for people. But um, yeah, so in in answer, it, it was not the case that MGNR was told and then went and did it again. <laughs> got it. Got it. Well, thank you. I appreciate you you uh, being transparent with us here. Uh, appreciate it. Um, I do have a uh, a list of questions here, but but looking at, at at the clock and seeing seeing some of those folks on the call already right now, um, why don't we just go on ahead and open it up to to questions? In uh, I just uh, I just saw there's a I just saw there's a question 
I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what the difference between prohibition and prevention is. Okay. Hey, Matt, do you want to come up and ask that question up on stage? Oh, wow. I just booted you. <laughs> I'm going to stop clicking. Go on ahead, Matt. Hey, everybody. And uh, thanks, guys. It's been really great so far. Um, thanks for all the wealth of information. Um, so I was just clarifying one thing. You said you kind of brought in, um, you know, a, a contract attorney, right? And that the new language or the, the language, pro, I think you said prevents it, but there, there's nothing actually preventing it. It just prohibits it. Like, so there would still need to be basically a, a court case, right? It's, there's no contract or like a smart contract that is actually preventing it. So I just want to clarify if that's the case. Oh, you mean the, that it's just it's using legal language to prevent yeah. it? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's extending a legal obligation not to do it. And, and that's, to, to clarify, so that's not in the new contract, that's in the existing contracts. Um, so it is outside the purpose, you know, the commercial intent of the loans. And there is a requirement that borrowers use the loans as kind of commercially outlined or commercially intended. Um, but no, it's not doing it at a smart contract level. And, and the reason I wouldn't pursue that as an option is because it's just so easily avoided. Like if you just transfer to a different address, that address would then be able to deposit, right? So it's like, if you then, you know, what do you expend? Like, I don't know, three engineering weeks and a new deployment of smart contracts to do so for something that's like, you know, able to be circumvented in, you know, 15 seconds. I'll let other people ask questions. Thanks. Yep, go on ahead and, and raise your hand if you've got another question. If not, I'll pull one from uh, from the list here. I think to you know, bridge the time, Matt, Matt, you had a couple of other questions, so we could just you know f fill the fill the gap and and address. Um, so maybe to touch upon the, the chart that uh, Matty um, pulled out on on, on January. Um, I mean, there's uh, like drop off of loan funded value is uh, is a you know we would frame it different. I mean, it's it's the loans previously have been or remain outstanding. It's just that January was a rather quiet month in terms of new loan uh, origination. And, you know, that's that's just a function of, of the market. Uh, so there are several factors, you know, probably the strongest factor that you also are aware uh, was that, you know, market was very volatile and you know, particularly went down. And probably people, <laughs> I mean, that's now my speculation and, you know, a bit with a wink, but perhaps rather um, you know, had to make sure not being liquidated rather than depositing into a, a, um, a liquidity pool to, to get a, a cash yield. Um, but, but, you know, we, we just, uh, I mean, we can only give loans based on new inflows and January was not the month where, you know, there were big allocations and we have been, you know, in, in, as, as Victor also mentioned, we are in constant, um, discussions with larger LPs, both DAOs and institutions. And as you can imagine, people are typically off in, in, in January. So, you know, all these processes have, have also been paused and there were just, you know, very limited inflows with, of, of, of which we then were able to, you know, issue new loans, but we were active. I mean, we, we still originated a, a decent amount and in February already, uh, have, you know, uh, done, done, done more volume than in, 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 in Jan before. Um, and to touch the second and third question, I mean, you have linked um, the the credit uh, memo basically. So this is not the not the DD questionnaire that is filled out. Um, we for sure have that linked in the government uh, governance forum post. Uh, it is it is linked there. Um, so they fill out the DD questionnaire, and we you know then drill that and you know try to make it as expansive as possible. So you know we're, we're not accepting short answers, but we really want to you know have a clear picture. And based on this information, on the you know Q and A's, interviews, uh, financial statements, a company presentation, all material that we can get, um, then we you know b write this uh, a credit memo. So this is the the duty of the pool delegate to you know write this. Uh, uh, credit application, more or less, that we then file and document, uh, and and this is not written by the. So it's 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 not that the customer is writing the credit risk assessment. Yeah, maybe just to add to Gabor, uh, we already uh, issued uh, over twenty million in, in in loans in February, and and you know we're only on the tenth, so clearly a pickup in activity again, and. Um, 
you know that that January was indeed uh, yeah just a bit of a quiet time for uh, for all of us. Uh. Do you think that yeah, market, you... market forces played a part in that as well? Yeah, I'd I'd say probably. I mean, like you had a lot of you would have had a lot of people kind of kind of um, uh, needing to cover margin, and so I think there was probably a bit of a cash constraint on the. Um, on the lending deposit and withdrawal side, where we probably needed to to kind of place hold, place hold for some impending withdrawals, uh, which would have been driven by a need for people to kind of cover margin potentially elsewhere. Awesome. Well, also uh, to right. add on that, maybe to 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 give some numbers. So in in January we had fifteen million uh, in loans issued, which is not uh, not amazing because in uh, in December we had thirty five. But now in February we see a really large demand, and actually the the inflow starts uh, start to come back to us again, and we are already at twenty two million as we speak. So in ten days, twenty two million uh, we issued already. And um, also to add to the DD questionnaire, so also in DD questionnaire, the uh, borrower needs to specify the the purpose of the funds. So. Uh, we always hear from the market makers uh, that they're gonna use the funds for the regular trading strategies, and then they are explaining the strategies to us. More or less, uh, it's always uh, it's always the same: uh, cash and carry, ar uh, exchange arbitrage, and and some other well-known strategies. So, indeed, we ask for the purpose uh, of, of of the loan, and then of course, if somebody would say, "Yeah, we want to arb your pool." Uh, this is not in our interest. We are also, as Maven 11, uh, one of the largest MPL holders and diluting ourselves. It's definitely not something that we want to do. Um, yeah. Well, it's really cool to see that that loan origination take back up. It's awesome for you guys. Um, do we have any other questions here? If not, I'm going to ask one more from the list and, and we'll, we'll close out. Um, but yeah, if anyone's got uh, got a question, go on ahead and raise your hand. If not, I'm going to read this last question here because I like it a lot. All right, I'm going to go ahead and, and read this one. So so this is from, uh, from Wes, and, and I'm going to put a little bit of my own spin on it as well um, because I, I, I like it and want to. But, but looking at you know, Maple's current and future operations in, in, in every aspect of, of what's kind of you know, going into to making the engine of your protocol run, you know, is there a route for integrating with KeeperDAO? Um, you know, possibly looking at liquidations or buybacks uh, or or other of avenues that you could see that that we could you know work with your either your pool delegates or or Maple um, or, or just kind of deeper collaboration. Is there anything that you guys could kind of see on the horizon there? Um, so actually, Maple it's already using uh, Keeper for liquidations. Uh, I think maybe maybe so we also have a link to our GitHub, which is uh, which is um, explaining this process. Maybe Sid has a bit more to to say about it. But also from our side, as a as a pool delegate, how we can uh, make our relationship stronger? Uh, then definitely um, we are talking with all of the market makers on a on a daily basis. And um, as with other products, for example, X Margin, which we are trying to to implement for the for the ETH pool already, which will allow us for live monitoring of the of the positions of the borrowers, then we really can help you to to get more exposure uh, to the market makers that we speak with, and we can um, we can try to uh, put some light on your product and uh, and help you integrate with them. I think we have enough uh contacts and, and and good relationship with them to, to 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 help you with that but as as i said already we are using already keeper for the for the liquidations let me That's drop awesome. the link was, actually to the you, github you, you you mentioned potentially buybacks there how, how would that work i'd be pretty interested yeah so so this is um well part of an, a super unofficial idea that, that the team has kicked around as well about um you know, possibly having a product specifically for for larger purchases or for DAOs specifically, um, or, or or for folks you know working off a larger multi sigs. Um, but b between kind of you know that product or or something that's going to happen with our protocol update um, on uh, you know kind of you know instant style uh, orders as well. 
where, where it would pretty much be that, you know, you guys would be just doing the same purchasing that you would, you know, do if you're buying back the, the maple token, but you'd use, you know, keeper Dow specifically, and, and you'd be earning back, you know, the rewards, um, in terms of, uh, you know, the, the extra MEV that's created off of your, your, your orders as well. So just, you know, the same way that we would work off of, um, you know, just any type of user or market maker, you know, you guys would be able to, you know, employ a lot of the, all the same benefits to, to your guys's orders action as well. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, I, I think, uh, well, I think, you know, as, as we kind of productionize that buyback side of things with, uh, with XMPL, that'd be def definitely be interested in exploring that. I'm not technical, so I can't speak too much to it. But like from a uh, from a business requirement sense, I think it sounds pretty interesting to uh, to do that while avoiding MEV. Awesome. Well, hey guys, um, I know that we're coming up right here on, on the top of the hour. This has been really really cool. I really appreciate you guys diving deep, getting into the numbers, um, getting into the details on it. If you guys uh, in the audience haven't yet checked it out, there is the uh, the draft on the forum about. Uh, potentially contributing some wrapped ETH uh, to their, their new wrapped ETH pool. Um, so please go check it out. Really an another large amount of great information and research that went into writing that as well. Um, if, you, if you didn't see it um, and joined late, be sure to check out their presentation in the, the KDCC slash Maple um, channel up, up at the top, and you can go through their whole presentation. But really, guys, Thank you for your time. It, it's been awesome. I, I really love always chatting with you guys. You guys um, are such pros. And so I appreciate you, you coming up here and chatting with me today. It Thanks, was a guys. pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, I really enjoyed you having us on. Awesome. Thank Have you, a good man. day, everyone. Yeah, thanks. Thank everyone. Everyone. Great questions. Bye, thanks bye. for your engagement. Bye. Yep. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Just a couple little housekeeping items as I wrap up here. Uh, don't forget, live on Snapshot right now, we have KIP14. Um, funding the uh, the B protocol B A M M right now. I think there's no objections, um, so that closes tomorrow. Just if you haven't voted yet, go hop on over there and do so. Um, you know, an another sound off. Go check out our jobs board. Share our jobs board with any of your your friends. Um, we've actually got some some uh, stuff to announce over the next week or so around there as well. So so stay tu tuned with that. And then tomorrow. Another town hall, another governance workshop on Saturday. But with that, we'll close out this Keep It Out community call. Again, I'm What's the Deets, and uh, thanks again for tuning in. Have a great week, everybody.